Let's continue the conversation on the Fed, which is set to decide on interest rate policy one week from today. Joining us for that is Jeffrey Lacker. He is the former president of the Richmond Fed. And, uh, sir, thank you for being here today. Let's talk about what you would be doing if you were at the Fed right now. Would you pause or would you skip at this meeting? And uh, what would you do at the next meeting? Uh, I, if it was up to me, I would have um, signaled uh, another increase at this meeting. I think they have a ways to go. Um, I think they're well positioned. If in, if the inflation rate was three and a half percent, and the unemployment rate was four and a half percent, but that's not where we are. Uh, the inflation rate's closer to five. It has shown no discernible or meaningful signs of uh, easing over the last six months. Um, the unemployment rate's going up uh, for sure, but it's still well below four. Um, I think. They're going to have to go above six when all is said and done, unless they get lucky. And I think they should be signaling that to markets and uh, proceeding the pace. There is another inflation number that comes next week, the day before this decision. Will will that potentially impact the decision that is made? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, they've um, they've sent the official signal to markets uh, that uh, a pause is on order. Um, they could conceivably uh, reverse course, but it's it's kind of beyond um, the time frame that they um, would have to be able to leap an official pivot uh, ahead of the decision on Wednesday. So um, I tend to think they're going to ignore it and and blow through it and and pause for now. What's the official signal, and how do we read that and know what's a real <laughs> signal and what's just speculation or what their thought is at the time? I mean, if they're going to be data based, shouldn't it be based on the very most recent information that they have? Well, they, um, Phil Jefferson was sent out last week um, to give essentially the official signal. Um, otherwise, what you do is you look at the House organ. Um, it used to be the Washington Post and John Barry, but now it's the Wall Street Journal. Um, the designated lead reporter who's uh, kind of got the inside scoop and, and uh, whose words are uh, the Oracle's views. So that's how you that's how you read the official signal. Couldn't he still write a story in the next week? It's true. Yeah, maybe he could drop something like mid afternoon Tuesday or something. So I, I wouldn't right, put Tuesday. it past him. I, I, in terms of how the market is kind of being led along by that, I, I, I thought we didn't really care if there was a little bit of concern of the markets if the markets went a little haywire because um, things have been so smooth. Markets keep climbing. I. I thought we were past the point of worrying about a little volatility in the stock market to, to make these decisions. Yeah, you would think so. I mean, the market strengthened over the last couple of weeks, so it's in a, a good place to absorb a bit of a, a sting, a bit of a surprise of, a, of an increase rather than a pause. Um, so, if I, you know, I think they should be brave and do it if that's what the data indicate. And I suspect the CPI will be another you know, sort of upside surprise. Um, and uh, it, it used to be the case that, there wasn't much signaling. There wasn't much, um, you know, foreordained uh, element to these decisions, and and uh, people just waited to see on Wednesday what the decision was. So I I I, I think it'd be healthy to go back to that. Yeah, it, it feels like everything these days. We don't want to be too harsh with anyone, so we kind of spoon feed them and and get along. But I I think the old ways sometimes are better too.